So now that we have a loop equation for the potential difference through the RC circuit, we can then come up with an expression for the charge with respect to time. So if we substitute in instead of Q, let's call this some variable amount of charge, and then current would be uh, dq dt because the current is the rate at which the charge moves times r equals zero. So now let's take our um, EMF minus q over c and set that equal to um, r dq dt. Now I see that I have two um, variables in here and I need to, or my Q and my Q are here, so I need to separate these um, variables. And so, so let's multiply both sides by C. So we would have C capacitance times the EMF, which is also the potential difference across the battery, Minus, now if we multiply Q over C by C, we'll have Q, and then this will be R times C, and then DQ DT. So then, let's finish our separation of variables. So we would have DT over RC is equal to DQ over capacitance times EMF minus Q. Now I have my Q's together and I can then integrate both sides. And I'm gonna integrate this from some zero time to some variable time. And I'm gonna integrate this from zero charge to some variable charge. So I know it's still a Q and that can look confusing but that's our limits because Q represents the variable amount of charge on the capacitor at any given time. So uh, integrating the left is pretty easy, so we'll just have T over RC, and then this over here is a little more complicated, but you might remember that you can do a UDU substitution. So if U is capacitance times EMF minus Q, then du would just be negative dq. And so I could substitute in negative du over u, and integrating that, I get um, negative ln of u. So doing that substitution back over here, I'll have negative ln of u, which was capacitance times EMF minus Q, and I'm gonna evaluate it from zero to some variable amount of Q. So first what I wanna do is divide this negative sign over. So I'll have negative T over RC is equal to, now the LN of capacitance times EMF minus Q minus the LN of capacitance times EMF minus zero. So then this would be the LN of capacitance times EMF minus Q over capacitance times EMF. And that's equal to negative T over RC. Now the goal is to figure out what is the charge as a function of time for this capacitor. So in order to get Q out of the equation, I'm gonna to have to uh, raise both sides with the natural log E, so that I'll E to the negative T over RC is equal to capacitance times EMF minus Q over capacitance times EMF. So we can further solve by multiplying both sides by capacitance times EMF and we'll have capacitance times EMF E to the negative T over RC is equal to the capacitance times EMF minus Q. So then Q of T would be equal to
capacitance times EMF minus capacitance times EMF e to the negative t over rc. So I could, um, let's pull out the c EMF and have 1 minus e to the negative t over rc. Now if we graph that function of q versus t, this will look like an exponentially increasing amount of charge where the asymptote would represent the, the charge and it would be the maximum charge on our capacitor. So it's reaching that maximum, which a maximum a lot of times we use capital Q, which would be equal to C times EMF because remember the Q the charge on the capacitor is equal to C, the capacitance, times delta V, and which is synonymous to C times EMF because the EMF is just the old school way to describe the potential difference. So now let's say if T is equal to RC, then we can make a substitution here and we'll have C times epsilon times 1 minus e to the negative 1, which is 0.37, and 1 minus 0.37 is about 0.63. So the charge on the capacitor at a time rc is equal to q times 0.63. Now this rc is a special time. It is tau, it is the time constant. So it is sort of like half-life, but instead of the time for half, it's the time at which the charge is Q times 0.63 or 63% of the total charge has accumulated on our capacitor at that time. Now this is useful because if you have a graph of charge versus time and you can de determine by examining the graph what the maximum charge would be, you could then determine the time constant, and if you have the time constant, it will be equal to R times C, the resistance times the capacitance, and knowing that value is very helpful if you're looking for the capacitance or the resistance of your circuit.